Good evening everyone, welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers update tonight the 20th of November 2013. My name's Chris Nitzo and tonight we're going to talk about all the latest happenings in the tropics and in particular we're going to focus on the tropical low currently south of Indonesia and pushing towards the far northwest parts of Australia. We take a look at satellite imagery thanks to weatherzone.com.au we can see the low pressure system in this particular area right here where my cursor is and we can see it spinning away or at least starting to spin away but it's still an elongated system and when we look at the model guidance we'll see what that means it's actually attached to a trough line that runs through in that direction and also a trough line that runs through in this direction being the monsoon trough and because of that reason it hasn't tightened up as much as it we would normally expect a system that looks uh, it, quite reasonable on satellite right now uh, to have done so. Forgetting about the low for a second and, and taking a look at the rest of northern Australia we see some very good convection all through this northern section of the continent um, pushing in a, a northwest to southeast direction in general uh, we can see some very good thunderstorm activity developing once again over Cape York and the Gulf Country and also over the northern uh, basically the entire region of the top end uh, a little bit clear over inland parts of Queensland a bit of dry air pushing into here some good storms also developing here west of Mount Isa uh, and all through the far western districts of Queensland if we take a look at the close-up of the tropical low at about 5.30 p.m. Queensland time, we can see the system in here, uh, but we also see that it's fairly ill-defined, and we can definitely see the cloud associated with the trough line that it's actually attached to uh, in through here, southeast of the actual system centre. But it is developed convection, or it has developed convection, and that convection is sticking around for a number of hours now. So we do need to watch this system. Let's have a look now at what some of the global computer models do with it. If we take a look at the only real global computer model that's picked this system up with uh, any of its real ensemble members is the UK MET model uh, that comes obviously from the UK. It's one of, our, one of our top global computer models in terms of cyclone forecasting. Uh, and it is showing uh, a basic east to southeast movement of the system over the next two to three days, but it remains very, very weak on its trek towards the far northwest coast. Now let's take a more in-depth look at where this system is going using some higher resolution imagery. So if we take a look at the Bureau of Meteorology's uh, computer model for the region, Access R we call it, and if we look at the low pressure system this morning at 10 a.m. Queensland time was located out here in the Indian Ocean and we will see how the particular system moves over the next three days. We see here the system moves slightly towards the east or east-southeast over the next 24 hours, uh, not with any great speed, however we do see a gradually very very slight intensification of the low pressure system in that period. Over the next 48 hour period until 10 a.m. on Friday Queensland time we see the system moving continuing to move in an east southeast direction and starting to approach the far northwestern coastline up here in the northern Kimberley they're going to start to feel the effects remember the system is also attached to a trough line and because of that trough line there's been probably a fair bit of shower and storm activity in the vicinity of the northern Kimberley or northwestern Kimberley region already well prior to this low approaching we see by the Saturday that the trough system that the low was being attached to and was being pushed in a southeasterly direction has now has now started to ease off and so the low starts to uh, move a little bit slower and stalls off the coastline here um, well off the uh, still off the North Kimberley coast however from here if we take a look at some of the more longer term models and we'll see what it does after Saturday morning but you can see up until Saturday morning still no rapid intensification expected of the system just yet if at all 
So looking at some slightly higher resolution imagery from Weather Underground of the ECMWF model and we can see that by Saturday morning both the ECMWF and the Bureau's access model have the system in a similar location off here to the west of the northwest or, or northern Kimberley coastline and if we continue moving on through to Saturday night we see the system pretty well grazing the North Kimberley coast and now developing a more northeast or east-northeast motion in that direction there um, and so because of that direct because of that motion we're probably according to model guidance at the moment likely to maybe just miss or just edge onto the coastline here of the of the northern Kimberley very very far northern Kimberley so it'll be touch and go as to whether it does make that initial landfall now if it doesn't it does have the chance of I guess um, not weakening out completely into a trophy type low and actually maintaining some type of structure on its approach to the coast now if it does hit the coast obviously it uh, it, it will struggle to to maintain some some level of structure if we look at, look at the winds around the system Saturday night we've got 25 to 30 knot winds even uh, sorry 20 to 25 knot winds all through the northern semicircle but really nothing to its south actually impacting the coast but over the water it could get a bit rough now if we move on to um, uh, to Sunday uh, around about lunchtime on Sunday and we actually start to see even the potential for strong winds to possibly very weak gales developing uh, on the approach of the system to the western top end. Now it's interesting that the European model doesn't develop the system as much as the GFS model. The GFS model actually delays the system from pushing eastwards a little bit longer and by the time the system makes landfall um, it, towards the end of Sunday or early Monday it's actually a category one type cyclone by the time it actually hits the coast. Now I do have to caution when we're looking at the GFS model the way the GFS model handles convection it does try to it does try to spin up cyclones when it shouldn't uh, so just be aware of that that the European overall is a more accurate model for for cyclones especially before they actually happen so if we look at the European model by Monday morning the system has already hit the coast but by Sunday evening uh, we, we've got some fairly strong winds particularly if the system hits south of Darwin Darwin one might actually see some fairly strong winds out of this. Now what gets interesting following on from this system we actually see and there's a little bit of model variance between the different the different global models as to whether we see a brand new low developing here in the Gulf or whether we see whatever was left of that particular low um, push across the base of the top end uh, and then push eastwards into the Gulf of Carpentaria now if I show you the European model here out to seven days now I do once again caution you because we are looking now out to seven days it doesn't tend to be anywhere near as accurate as the first five days. Now we can see uh, if you have a look in this area here we've got a low pressure center uh, we've got some fairly decent winds to its eastern semicircle wrapping around the system so some very heavy rain in this area um, but once again not much to the west and south of the system in this in this particular case however in the longer term of the European and the longer term of the GFS model we do start to see this system take a little bit more uh, get a little bit more structured and possibly even uh, having a chance at becoming a very decent low pressure system uh, accompanied by a lot of rain uh, and once again looking at the GFS model it does develop it into a tropical cyclone the Euro does as well but a very weak system so we are looking that far ahead though that we do need to be very cautious about talking tropical cyclones out to 10 days so if we take a look at the 10 day out guidance and we do see a uh, tropical low very strong tropical low or very weak tropical cyclone out here according to the European model and we'll see something very similar uh, on the GFS model so the GFS model just a, a couple of days earlier has a very strong tropical low in the southeastern Gulf as well so it is look there's a fair bit of model guidance that now, now is suggesting that a tropical low of some type will form in the Gulf country um, however whether it's the same tropical low that ends up hitting just to the south of Darwin or whether it's a brand new tropical low that develops along the monsoon trough we're not quite sure of just yet 
And obviously, and it goes without saying, it is far too early to talk about direction, where this new tropical low could hit, uh, how strong it could be. Far too early to talk about any of those things because it is just too far out and the guidance can change too quickly. Uh, there's no once we're in a, once we're into a monsoonal type situation, the weather can change 24 to 48 hours is a very very long time. So all we need to do today is show you that there is the possibility that a tropical low may form in the Gulf. At this stage, looks like a reasonably strong tropical low, but. Uh, as to whether it becomes a cyclone and as to whether it, where it goes, we can't tell you. We'd only be guessing. So here's an example of why we can't talk to you about where the cyclone or low will go. Uh, this is now looking out to the 2nd of December and we're looking now at the GFS model and we're looking at all the different model members and what they're showing us. Now all of these circles are areas where the potential low or cyclone could be. So you can see that the, the area ranges from way out here all the way through to back over the top of Darwin. So we, we really have absolutely no idea as to where this thing could be. It could be anywhere in that region. So it is absolutely futile for us to say to you, this is going to be a low that's going to go into Queensland or it's going to be a cyclone that's going to smash the coast. We just don't know and the models don't know. There's no way anyone will know. Uh, so the best we can tell you is that current model guidance suggests the current low will hit the coast south of Darwin, will create a monsoon and along that monsoon we will either see that low push towards the Gulf or a new low form in the Gulf and that low then could do anything. All right. Let's have a look at where the rain's going to fall over the next 7 to 10 days. So if we take a look at rainfall tomorrow, we see once again the peninsula is going to be pretty active. Anywhere south of about towns, although things start to definitely dry out, uh, we're still going to have fairly good shower and storm activity all over the top end. And also in that north Kimberley, as that low starts to push and it's associated, remember, it's got an associated trough with it. Uh, so it's not just the low that's giving out the rainfall there, it's the trough as well. So that pushes onto the North Kimberley. As we go into Friday and have a look at how things change for Friday, we see that that rainfall gets a little bit closer to that Kimberley coastline. Uh, we've got still good rain there. Uh, still good rain here over the eastern top end. Uh, not so much over the western top end in a couple of days time. Um, and if we go into Queensland, that rainfall now spreading out a lot further south and a lot further to the west. And so we don't have just uh, that rainfall isolated in the top half of the state it actually moves a lot further down that's associated with a new trough system which is going to bring another bunch of severe thunderstorms out to the southeast uh, as if they haven't had enough fun already um, as we go to saturday Saturday we see more and more rain now starting to uh, penetrate into Queensland. We start to see some uh, moderate, to he moderate falls at least of 25 to 50 millimetres through a lot of the inland parts of the state. Uh, and those, state, those parts that don't get 25 to 50 get 15 to 25 on this particular day. Spreading out to the coast anywhere north of about Bowen. Um, however, the coastline further south is going to see a little bit less rainfall. Most of that storm activity remaining fairly inland, fairly well inland. Uh, over the top end we see rainfall rates starting to increase as well, 25 to 50 mils uh, seeping through further down south into the territory as well. And as we head towards Sunday, now Sunday is the day where we're expecting that low pressure system near Darwin to make landfall and we see that 50 to 100 millimetres in the vicinity of where that low makes landfall. Now that could increase depending on obviously how strong that low is. If that low gets a little bit stronger we could see even more rain. Most of that rain will fall to the north of where the low hits so Darwin would be in a very good spot on current model estimates uh, to get a fair bit of rain from that system. Uh, same thing over the eastern top end and central top end we're still seeing good rainfall. The Gulf country now starts to get active. Remember the Gulf is the spot to look at once this, uh, once this particular low pushes onto the coast in the Northern Territory. Uh, we, we need to watch the Gulf very, very closely for further development. And moisture continuing to seep through into Northern Queensland as well. So over the four day period, so over these first four days, uh, we're going to see 50 to 100 mils over much of northern, uh, far northern Queensland, 25 to 50 mils over most of central uh, and most of the rest of eastern Queensland. The Gulf Country here, 25 to 50. The eastern parts of the top end, 50 to 100 mils. The western parts of the top end, a bit less. That moisture 
continues to seep well into the central parts of the Northern Territory and also the North Kimberley looking at 25 to 50 or 15 to sorry 15 to 50 millimeters depending on where you go now the next four days once again this is what we're spruiking about the next four days when that gulf gets active and when that low hits the coast and we see the monsoon get more active we're going to see 50 to 100 millimeters in general up to two to three hundred millimeters possible over the gulf country uh, 50 to 100 millimetres over the northern parts of Queensland as well. Uh, a lot less as we head further south in Queensland, but the drought regions are going to cop 1 to 2 inches, which is fantastic news. So if we look at the entire 8-day period uh, for the next week or so, you're going to see some pretty good rain all through the northern half of the country, once again, except for the uh, Pilbara region and the Gascoigne region of WA. Uh, overall, we're looking at 100 plus millimetres over most of northern Queensland, up to 200 millimetres in parts, 2 to 300 on the Western Cape, uh, 2 to 300 probably in parts of the very, very extreme northern top end uh, in that very, very uh, moist northwest flow, uh, and also that moisture seeping through, uh, as I said, into central parts of Northern Territory, central parts of Queensland, even western parts of Queensland, copping a bit of rain there as well. Last thing we'll look at tonight before we leave you is the MJO latest and the latest dynamical modeling here for the MJO is not good news at all uh, we have an MJO that's basically dead it doesn't exist uh, and is not expected to be revived anytime soon according to most model guidance so it's very uh, very weak it's variable the guidance is not very uh, suggestive of it re-intensifying into anything significant yet but once again if we look at the guidance we can see that there's a big gap here between the outliers um, here and the outliers here so we could have anything up to a moderate MJO out through to December so folks once this uh, monsoon retreats back to the north there's no clear indication as to when it'll be back uh, so well, let's hope we can make the most out of uh, some rainfall early in the season because we just don't know when that monsoon will come back in December at this stage uh, if it does come back in December so it's important that we do enjoy the rain and uh, don't wish it away because uh, we don't know when it'll be back all right thanks very much for watching tonight and we'll talk to you again tomorrow night as things heat up and the wet period gets even closer. Good night.